Um, I got to know Kyle uh, a couple of years ago, I think, and um, they've actually been coming to the church. And I started taking my family to the chiropractic clinic. And uh, we changed a lot of our approach on healthcare in a sense, where we actually really have focused a lot on staying healthy versus just going to the doctor when we're sick. Um, matter of fact, we're so locked in and we've even bought into it so much that we even switched over to a really high deductible insurance plan because we're <laughs> never sick. So um, we were paying all this money every month for an uh, insurance plan that was a low deductible, but we weren't using it. And so um, I would even say in the past couple of years, we've just, we've hardly gotten sick. Um, I used to have, um, I used to have uh, allergies really bad, which today they would be acting up terribly. Um, and then I had uh, sinus infections. Uh, about twice a year, I'd get a sinus infection. And uh, I haven't had a single sinus infection. So um, since I started just uh, making some slight changes, getting adjusted. And so, but the point of today is actually that we want to sit down and just provide some really practical ways that people can become more healthy. Um, you know, we've got this big, the media is making a big, scary coronavirus right now. And it's, they're, they're just throwing out fear, 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 fear. And um, we want to just, just equally throw out hope and you know faith that you don't have to be scared actually you know we'll probably talk about it but being fearful actually can release stress which actually does the opposite and so um we just want to sit down and practically talk about some things some people will send in some questions and uh what that looks like so kyle uh, i'm gonna let you kind of kick it off one of the things we want to talk about is uh, the topic of becoming your own health expert basically yeah. and so let's just jump in cool okay um so just kind of starting off on, on my end so when, we, when we dive into like fear and everything else too um there's no one that isn't going to have that at some level you know and so we, we all have that it's just understanding that when you understand how your body's made to work and you um we call it become your own health expert but at the end of the day it's just understanding what health is and if you have this underlying base of this anything else that comes at you like you know on the news they're saying this virus is going to kill everybody or or whatever numbers are or you have to have this vaccine to, in order for this to happen and they throw all these things at you by these experts that look really smart on tv and your mindset is oh they must know what i even actually saw some social media posts are like how are you going to question these experts they put their whole life into this career but then you also don't understand those experts are also working for a corporation so uh, but not to go there but just knowing that when you understand your body and you understand health then you the fear actually isn't as big yeah. because you can always go back to wait that doesn't line up kind of deal so um, so yeah, when it, when it comes to becoming your own health expert, I like the idea. Um, if you think of our healthcare system as a whole right now, it's more of like, like a, um, we call it a fire department system or emergency care system. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So yeah. it's like, if you, um, let's say you're having a heart attack, not you, cause I wouldn't say that to you. <laughs> Somebody's having a heart attack somewhere in a dark place. Um, yeah, they're having a heart attack and they wouldn't call in, you know, Joe Schmo chiropractor down the road, right? They wouldn't call us in and say, okay, come save this guy's life. Um, ultimately, it's whatever we have to do to save that guy's life. We take him to the hospital, they pump him full of all, kind of all kinds of medications, and then they start working on the heart, and they do whatever they have to do, and if those don't work, then they crack the chest, and they get in there, and they actually start getting the heart moving, possibly open up arteries and things like that, right? So that's your emergency care system. So think of it, we call it the fire department system because it's the same thing as if, let's say you go home today and your house is on fire. Right, so imagine your house is on fire. What's the first thing you're gonna do? Yeah, call the emergency. You're gonna call the fire department, right? So you call the fire department. They show up, they have a, um, a ax and a hose. They have two tools, right? And they're gonna go in with that ax, they're gonna slam the door down, and then they're gonna go in with the hose, they're gonna um, you know, spray your doors down, spray your walls down, spray all your valuables, your pictures, your carpet, everything gets sprayed down, and then the fire's gone. Yeah. Right, so then when you, when you go in there and you see this house, everything sprayed down, you're actually pretty thankful because your house is still there, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say they save some of it. And so you can rebuild that house, but now the next day, you know, the fire department's look at it and they're like, look how great we are. And they are great because they just saved your house's life. It wouldn't be there. But at the next day, are you gonna call the fire department to come spray it down again? Mm -mm. <laughs> right, it's like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, that's what we're doing is we're saying, okay, you had this heart attack and instead of saying, why did you have a heart attack? What's happening in your body? What can we do to make sure that never happens again to get you healthy? We're saying, everybody's the same. Take an aspirin, take a cholesterol med, take a um, blood pressure med and, and then maybe a blood thinner and then go on, and that's what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. 
So in essence, we're calling the fire department to come every single day to water down our house yeah. with the medications. So even though those are there for the short term, we actually have to figure out what's causing it. And that's so the next day when you go to your house, you're calling the contractor and the carpenter. Yeah. Right. And that's kind of what, what we are. I mean, yeah. That's what that's what real health care actually is. So you got emergency care and then you have health care. So the first part is to understand that principle. If you're not in an emergency, then we don't want to act like you are. Yeah. That's so you know? good. So. Yeah, I mean, our, our health care, and this might be something we get into in a little bit, is actually, like you're saying, it's really more of a sick care. Um, it's not really much about health. I mean, you know, the idea is addressing people that are sick. But what we're talking about is really how can we keep people, you know, from getting to that point. And, and so for us, that's a really big deal because I think a lot of people are asking questions. Um, it, it's, it's actually a really good opportunity for this message to shine because people haven't really worried about it before. And maybe not worried, but they haven't focused on it before. Yeah, they think heart disease, but they think like years from now. Exactly. And and you go out now and everyone's concern is how can I stay healthy all of a sudden? How can I? And it's like we've really got an opportunity That's to take this um, and shift it mm -hmm. and really get some momentum for people getting more proactive about being healthy. And so um, it's just what I'm seeing. Is I, I, there's a lot of fear in there also. But uh, at the same time, I think there's an opportunity to speak into it from a health perspective. Yeah. So with, with that, when you start to look at, um, okay, so, so the principles of how our body actually works, right? So you start with that, and that's a kind of a base. So when we think about how the body works or how the body heals, let's say that, is that your body heals from the inside out, mm -hmm. meaning there's nothing you can take that will actually heal you. Mm, that's good. So that, that, I, that, philosophy and it's really i mean end of the day it's kind of a fact i mean there really is no special pill or um, there's no special plant like even even natural stuff isn't going to heal you it never will it never a chiropractic adjustment can't heal you you heal yourself mm -hmm. right so with that said that we know that if we're trying to get healthy and trying to make sure our body's healing at its highest level then it's not just about taking things even though those are can help support your body's ability to okay. heal. at the end of the day it's about removing interference and giving your body the optimal ability to heal. Now that, that might've sound like a bunch of jargon there, but what that ultimately means is, is you're looking for the stressors in your life, whether they're emotional, whether they're physical, whether they're chemical, our body sees those all the same. We're looking for the stressors in our life that, um, that we need to either remove or continue to strengthen our body to handle. Okay. So I always find the emotional stresses are the hardest ones to handle. So we just need to, if we're, if we're doing, working on the physical stress and the chemical stress, so that means putting less chemicals into your body, right? And that means um, moving and not, you know, if you have accidents or injuries, working on healing those physical stressors. And then in return, you can handle those emotional stressors way more. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I know that it's always amazing me, especially your wife, Dr. Holly. Uh, she, uh, when I come in and get adjusted, she seems to be the one that can just immediately like call out. Like it's it's amazing. I don't know if it's purely just uh, her her gifting medically, or if there's like some spiritual discernment that goes on with her. But she'll uh, or she, she just tells everybody they're mess. <laughs> <laughs> She's so good though. Like like you'll sit down and like she'll adjust you and be like, oh, you need to, you know, whatever stressing you out, you need to. She's called me out a few times. She's like, you are way too stressed out. And just the effect that she can immediately feel just on my body, how it's it's like locking up. And so um, that began to make me really aware of how much just what's going on on the outside is physically impacting the inside. And that's the thing that I appreciate about you guys and your approach so much is, is really the idea is to get yourself to heal yourself. You know, it's not to, you know, you know, you guys aren't, you know, making a bunch of money off vitamins, you know what I mean? Or something like that. You guys are from day one, the approach has been, how can we get you to get in a place where you get back to like a big, like a reset button where God created you that your body would heal itself. And that's, and that's kind of what we're talking about. So that makes me think. So when, when we're talking about this kind of being your own health expert, okay, so everybody wants health, right? So then I, my question would be, wh what actually is it? Yeah, that's great. Like, what's the definition of health? And the craziest part is, is go ask your doctor or the nurses. and Everybody's been through this healthcare education or whatever. Um, no, most people can't answer that. Mm. They're going to say, well, if you feel good, the lack of disease, and or whatever that is, no medications, but the actual definition of health, according to the World Health Organization in the Dwellings Dictionary, is that your body's functioning and healing at 100%, and it actually says in there not the absence of disease. 
So it's that's your body's functioning and healing and recovering and, and handle. And at the end of the day, how resilient you are to the stresses in life is how long you live and how much you enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. So at the, at, when it comes down to it, it's about making sure your body removing interference. So, so I'm going to say that again. So the actual definition of health is your body's ability to heal itself. To it's function not, and heal at 100%. But, which is amazing because it's not about just having nothing wrong. Because the reality is, is we live in a fallen world. There's always going to be something else coming after us. But the definition of health is the ability to heal ourselves. Yeah. That's really good. So, so you take that definition when you're asking, what should I do in this situation? Right? So if your doctor says, okay, you need to take this medication. If that medication so the way medications work so understanding this is big too the way medications work 100 percent of the time this is like literally how they figure out how to create them okay. is they block or they in, they inhibit or they excite different pathways in our body okay so um a blood pressure medication inhibits pathways so that you don't blood pressure so your body doesn't stress out and go go high right so it, different medications do that what we don't realize though is that you so you go to a cardiologist and they give you let's say an aspirin that inhibits a certain pathway and then in return it actually say it's healthy for your heart but they don't realize is those pathways aren't just in your heart those pathways are also in your gut they're also in, in your you know your your other parts of your system and so those pathways are getting blocked too that's why they have side effects and they're not actually side effects they are just effects that will happen and it's just extreme in some people where they actually notice a symptom from it that's why one medication causes fatigue or this medication causes constipation or uh, ED or whatever that might be because it's blocking the pathway still. So in other words, the medication in an emergency saved your life. So who cares if you have digestive problems if your heart still works, right? Yeah. So thank God it's there. Yeah. But over time, you can't be healthy and you actually get sicker and sicker if we keep doing that. Wow. So wow. going back to that definition and saying, does this, does this give my body a better ability to heal itself and function better? Or is it going to take away? Yeah. And that's, that's kind of how you answer your stuff there. That's good. One of the things that I think uh, for us personally, anyways, um, learning that we're, when we're taking medications, we're treating symptoms mm -hmm. instead of often treating the cause. Um, I know one of the things that probably most parents are, at least as a parent, I have three kids and the one that's scariest for all of us, at least for us, is fevers. Yeah. Like that's a scary one. And so um, I always grew up thinking, you know, you, you got to get that fever down. You got to give them uh, ibuprofen. We got to give them all these Tylenols, different yeah. options, Tylenols or whatever, um, to get rid of the fever. And so speak into that for a minute, because that's just a really practical one yeah. that I think like every parent struggles with. And so as I've learned more about this, it's just been helpful for me to know, hey, um, this is how the body's dealing with things. So how about a fever? How, how does that work? Cool. Um, so just a side note, as we're diving into that with ibuprofen, um, they've actually, the, the, in, in, I can't remember the exact um, people who came out with it, but it was one of the hospitals. Anyways, they're saying not to take, with coronavirus specifically, actually not to do ibuprofen because it can cause a lot of other issues. It can hmm. actually make things, I didn't actually spend a lot of time reading why that happens, but that was one of actually the medical recommendations. Is, so that's a heads up. So if, if somebody does have something like that, don't take ibuprofen. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so, so when your body creates a fever, it's our innate ability to heal. We were given this ability to take out viruses, bacteria, whatever it is that gets into our system and starts to control it, right? Because that's ultimately what it is, yeah. right? Because you have a, I mean, there's viruses in here right now. I mean, they're, they're always there. They sit in our body. And then eventually if our, our um, microbiome gets weak enough, I mean, you'd use too much antibiotic stuff or your bacteria is just weak and your pH gets high enough, your the viruses get in. The viruses can come in this way, they can come in through your skin. And then when they get in, they, um, they start to, get into cells and that's when they start to reproduce. Okay. And then our body creates an immune response. Part of that immune response is your fever. Okay. So when you get the fever, that tells you an invader has to come in. Okay. Okay. So whatever it is, an invader came in and now your body's saying, okay, it's attack time. It's your defense system, right? So it raises the temperature for, they've shown that for bacteria, it needs to get about to 102 degrees. For viruses, you need to get about 104 or more to kill a virus. So that's, so it's the body basically trying to kill it out. Exactly what it's trying to do. And so the, the actual pediatric journals will tell you to let it burn. Wow. So that's, that's a medical recommendation actually. That's interesting. Let it burn. Um, and so the good news is that as you let that burn, well, they've also, so if we, t so imagine that, so you, your fever goes up, you take a Tylenol, what are you doing? Are you helping your body to heal better or are you taking away from its ability to heal? Taking away from Taking away from, but you feel better. But what they've actually shown is it'll make the actual virus, whatever, last longer. 
So um, yes, yeah, so, so you let that fever burn out. And let, the biggest thing we have to get back to is having faith in our body's ability to heal. We have mm. more faith in man, his drugs, and God and the God he created. That's so good. I mean, it's just the end of the day, that's what it is. It's fear is why we do the fever. I'll tell you a personal story. So um, our, our daughter, Eleanor, has um, actually never, had, she had one fever when she was, I think, a year and something. And we this is cool, we adjusted her and it literally went away. <laughs> um, I'm not going through why, but yes, it does. And so, but then from there, She's never had really anything since then. This last January, Isabel, with Isabel being born, mm-hmm. um, us not sleeping, just a lot of stress going on. Um, she got a she, she Holly had a fever, and then Isabel, or Eleanor got a fever, mm. right? So I slept with her, slept with her that night. Fever was really high. It was like a one hundred four. So we kind of knew okay, this is a virus. Her body's fighting it, and we just supported it. We adjusted her. We gave her um, her her you know vitamin D three and those things, and just let her sleep. And in the middle of the night, she actually had a seizure. So oh, a febrile wow. seizure. So, and in the night, automatically like, oh, that's really scary. And it was yeah. fairly scary, but at the same time, I also know that, that, that your body uses a seizure to break a fever. Hmm. That's how smart our body is, as wow. a backup system, right? So it uses the seizure. And, and if you Google febrile seizures, it's actually very common and not a big deal. There's hmm. no problem with it. It's not, a, you can't medicate for it, you just let it happen. Hmm. So she had a seizure. Fever dropped to 102, and then um, she went to sleep. We woke up the next morning. Wow. She um, had horrible diarrhea, <laughs> and then everything was gone. Wow! <laughs> so like it was like her body just like completely doing everything it can to kill this thing, and get rid of it. Right? I, I know I've got a friend that uh, actually just went through. Um, he he was diagnosed with a extremely rare form of cancer. Um, it, matter of fact, all these different schools even wanted to send people out to turn them into a guinea pig to a degree because it was such a rare form. And uh, he chose to go out to uh, Spain to have a bunch of treatments done, which is, uh, I talk about that another time, the results have been absolutely mind-boggling. I mean, he's almost 100% back in everything. But one of the treatments was uh, stuff with his body temperature, just bringing it up really high. Yeah, high, high, he, high, like hot tubs and he, stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah. Saws, and yeah. just, I mean, they bring it, and he said that was one of the most brutal parts of the tr- treatment, but it's killing everything off. It's like 110 degree hot tubs they make him get in and stuff. <laughs> That's rough. Oh, yeah. So, well, um, segueing a little bit, so we're talking uh, about just learning how your body works. Let's move over a little bit more into the, um, let's say the top, you know, top five ways maybe that we can build a strong immune system. Because that's the one thing that even the news keeps saying is that people with strong immune systems, you're good. I mean, that's, that's basically what they're saying. So how can we create a strong immune system that's really, you know, practical for people that are saying, I'm stuck at home for the next couple of weeks. What are some things I can begin to do now? Perfect. So um, to, I, want, I want you to understand the immune system and I won't go too long into this for time, but there is one big thing you want to understand so you know, because then it teaches you how without even me giving you five things. Okay. But I'll give you some five things, but there, yeah. you, you'll, you can figure these out on your own after this. So the only reason our immune system would ever be low, okay? So the only reason it's ever going to go low is if your body is in a fight or flight stress mode. Hmm. If you're in balance and you're in homeostasis, which we call balance, like nervous systems going back and forth between parasympathetic and sympathetic, just fight and flight or calm, um, your immune system will work the way it's supposed to. Your digestive system will work. Your Every wow. organ system in your body will function properly the way it's supposed to. It's when we're stressed. And again, it's either physical stress, which a physical stress could be a gut infection. A physical stress because then you have no idea about, or in, in essence, and if you don't know about it, you have no control over. So that's why some people are just like i have a low immune system i've done everything right but it's still low it's because there's more to it it could be more to it than that but end of the day if your body's way up here and you're in stress mode your immune system's going to be way down here wow so the answer to get your immune system back up is we got to get you back to here so your first step you do number one i would say to evaluate the stressors in your life which is in our culture yeah pr- most people are pretty stressed oh we all are i mean yeah. well one we are because for some reason, i mean just like emotional stress so think about this. So think about the depression, mm-hmm. which we're not going into yeah. right now, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just think about the depression. They didn't have crazy rates of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But were, were they pretty stressed? I mean, abs- I mean, I'd assume they were pretty stressed. So, But they didn't have the physical, the chemical stresses that we have. So the emotional stress, I really feel like human beings are made to handle. Mm. I really do. Like We're pretty resilient people. Yeah. Uh, being said, be actually still be on this planet, right? Yeah, I don't think God didn't think that one through. Exactly. You know? <laughs> I yeah. think he thought yeah. it through. So I think we're meant to do that. Um, but I think the physical and chemical, especially stresses, have gotten so big on us 
that our bodies are just going literally just trying to survive wow. and we're stuck in this fight or flight mode most people are so number one evaluates the stressors but you have to know that stress isn't just emotional a lot of people will come into our clinic like i'm not stressed at all and now take an x-ray look at their gut and it's all kinds of inflammation and destroying like yeah you're stressed you just don't know it so just just because you don't feel like you're emotionally crazy in your stressed. mind doesn't yeah. mean that your body's not stressed if you, if you sit at a computer all day you're stressed <laughs> that's true so, i mean physically you're stressed so um if you don't move if you you know this it's just stress you know okay. so that's it and then if you take if you take medications if you drink lots of sodas if you eat lots of sugar you're stressed hmm. so you got to look at the big picture because our body doesn't see a difference when it comes to stress it'll it'll act the same so number one is address those stressors number two and and, and it's kind of the same but it's a point within that is um i mean look what you're putting in your body hmm. so um removing the stuff that creates the most stress in our body so your your um the things that are sh like refined sugars are turned to sugar hmm. in other words like your pasta rice everything you like pretty much <laughs> <laughs> Everything we were taught to eat to be healthy, and now we're all addicted to. Yeah. At the bottom of the food pyramid, uh, pasteurized <laughs> breads, sugars, and grains are going to inflame you. So. All the stuff that we've all went and bought. Yeah. We're going to exactly. get trapped in our house for the next couple weeks. Exactly. Or all the things. Well, just, I just ruined a lot I of people's bought, uh, pantries right there. I just had there's a local farm. <laughs> I would love to give them a shout out, but I can't think of their name right now that we can have meat from. I feel bad. We'll put it in the comments later. Yeah, later. But anyways, they're um, it's peaceful meadows. That's what okay. it's peaceful meadows in Monroe. They're awesome. Somebody refer me to them. But um, I just bought I don't know, like ten whole chickens. <laughs> so you want to know my 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 scared whatever. Um, so I know where state, I'm going if we run out stuff. of food. I have a bunch of grass-fed organic <laughs> beef and chickens and quinoa. There you go. Okay, 10, 20 pounds of quinoa. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize how much 20 pounds was when I ordered it. That's a lot. It showed up. I'm like, that's, that's a lot. All right. <laughs> Guess the neighbors have food too. Um, so cutting down stress yeah. even from things we're eating. Yeah. Okay. And everything's you're eating. So things that turn to sugar. And then there's stressors that we're eating. This one's a hard one, but there's some things that are good for us that aren't like, is there something that's good for me that might not be good for you? Okay. And like like you, I could eat avocados and I'm good with them, but then let's say your body creates an allergy to avocados because mm. of years of gut issues that we've all kind of had. That'd be really bad for my wife. Mm. Yeah, I know. So avocados are her love. That's the way to go. <laughs> but but so but the, but the point is is that's still creating stress. Okay. So but at a simple level, removing pasteurized breads, grains, and sugar, gluten and dairy are huge. Take those two out. Like even if you think it's good dairy, just take those two out. They're not they're not needed. And um your vegetables. I mean okay. your cruciferous vegetables, your biggest bang for your buck, free range organic animals that are raised the way they're meant to be raised. If you eat that way, you're you're in essence mm. without doing like allergy testing or anything like that, okay. that you're doing your best bet and that's <laughs> that guess what guess what diet that is huh. it's not the keto it's just an anti-inflammatory diet there's no actual like specific fad name for it it's just how we should all eat so you don't have to chase it's diets called, anymore it's called discipline it's called it's, discipline. it's the diet of discipline however it's the diet of if champions you, if you do it long enough it's no longer <laughs> discipline it's just like natural it just becomes part of what you this do. is the challenge for me i'm feeling like, i feel like we need to change the topic here but uh if you're someone that won't eat vegetables you can <laughs> you can just eat chickens okay so stress is a big one any other ones that are really uh, yeah important? so your your stress change your diet sorry the thing change your diet and then um Oh, move. Yeah, movement. So okay. if you want to counteract stress, the, the, there's three things that they've actually done a, a ton of research on that they've shown um, bring your body back into that homeostasis. Mm. Number one is, um, we'll go with this because I'm going to use it. Number one is actually movement. They call it proprioceptive movement. Okay. So I, you've heard me say this before, but 90% of the stimulation to your brain actually comes from the movement of your spine. Wow. So the reason chiropractic, people might see me post on, on my Facebook page that chiropractic helps with the immune system. It doesn't, it's, we don't adjust you in your immune system, like I'm, I'm triggering, we're adjusting you and bringing you closer to homeostasis, which means your immune system is going to work better. Wow. It's, and so you're, you digest food better. Everything actually functions better because we're bringing you closer to balance. So the same thing, movement is actually a big part of that. The reason chiropractic works so well is because we're bringing proprioceptive movement into your spine. Mm. And a lot of these joints will lock up and we get them moving again. And it, remove stress so the same thing is if you sit all day you're going to be stressed so move get up um one of the questions you mentioned 
I think somebody asked was um, how well, how do you how do you take care of your spine if you can't afford a chiropractic yeah, care? Yeah, it's huge. So um, get yourself like a wobble cushion, an exercise ball, something like that. And if you can't afford one of those, you I guess you could just do it. I mean, but move. Yeah. Like when y'all come to the clinic, you go to the side to side, yeah. front to back. So you get yourself full range of motion, spinal exercises. You could probably YouTube spinal exercises. The motion is key because that keeps fluids healthy, discs healthy. It pumps cerebral spinal fluid, which feeds nutrients and minerals to your brain, and it stimulates your brain. We've all wow. been we've all been on a computer and gotten up like we sit three hours and we mm-hmm. you feel like you didn't do anything, but yeah. you're exhausted. But if so you went true. and walked around the block, you feel energized. So true. So it, it, that's that's kind of proof there. But movement's the biggest. Wow, it doesn't have so to be good. a workout. It's just move. That's so so. I mean, I feel like we could talk for hours on this stuff. I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of interest on this. So uh, stress, um, movement, any other ones that are big for so just... So stress, we're going to take food outside of stress. You know, that's, these are all stressors. So okay. it's kind of hard to they kind of all go into that stress. I got gotcha. you. So we'll take the first one as emotional stress. How about okay. That? And I'll, actually, let's circle back on that. <laughs> Can we do that? Sure. Okay. So the first one's stress. We're going to keep it emotional stress. That first one we said. So the number one, uh, and this, I, I, to throw quick tips for emotional stress is almost like funny because it's like, that, that made, you made that sound really easy and no one can actually do it the way it just comes out of my mouth. Yeah. But these are really good ones. So perception. One of the things I always do when we speak is, is we do this idea of um, like thinking of a, a puppy. Mm. So like if you just thought of a puppy right now, what, what kind of puppy are you thinking of? Um. This puppy I just saw on Facebook, but yeah, what is it? This is a little fluffy dog, a fluffy brown yeah, thing or something. That it got into a jar of strawberry jam. But. Okay, so when you think of a puppy, are you pretty happy thinking about? Yeah, them? I am like, pretty happy actually. The jam or the puppy? No, it was pretty funny. <laughs> it was the puppy though. So you, you you think about this puppy and you're like feel really like sweet and cuddly and you just like when it like it nibbles your ear and you're just yeah. comfortable. Right? But then every time I, we do these these um, things at seminar at seminars we teach and stuff. Um, everyone, it looks, there's always one or two people that are just like that stupid dog. It's like going to pee on my shoes. It's going to tear my carpet <laughs> up. Right. And I, I like to use that because it actually is a huge picture for life. You have two people thinking of the same thing. Yeah, one's miserable about it or in a stressed mode. And one's actually in a relaxed, chill out mode with being in you know, a very healthy mode. And so it's the same thing. So the, only, the, the number one way I think, and it comes to handling stress is your perception of life, like That's how you so actually good. see it. Yeah, you know, because which is where a lot of the spiritual aspect is. One hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, when you when you know who you are and you know who God is and what He says about you and what he, He's promised you, then and, I, and so, see, I was saying like I make this sound so easy, like I actually do it every day. <laughs> I always be careful when I talk about mindset because no one's perfect about it. But it's so true. It's, I mean, it's, it's our, how you think, but it's for, still not perfect. For me, I mean, even last night when we worshipped and when we got together and we just you begin to realize first of all that you know god is good like we're good we're safe in him i'm in him he's in me and and it immediately it's just so important to our, our mental health of just realizing that you know we're good you know so many people are um, man they're just going crazy over this virus and I, and i and i definitely don't want to downplay last thing i want to get on here is uh, be insensitive to anyone that's you yeah. know lost someone to it or that's gotten sick to it but uh, at the same time, I just realized how much fear is trying to like immobilize people, just just stop them in their tracks. And uh, it's it's a time where uh, I even heard a friend of mine got online recently. Uh, the worship leaders out of Bethel Church said, "Man, what a time to just keep worship music playing in your house. Like just yeah. just keep the presence of the Lord there because it's so important to your spirit health. But from what you're saying, to your emotional and your physical health, oh, tremendous, yeah." And that's, I think the mindset and the emotional part of it and the spiritual part of it is by far, you mean you see people that, I love this concept, the people that drink Diet Coke and live to 110 or smoke cigarettes and live to 110, <laughs> so right? True, so if, if, if nutrition was the number one answer, the answer to being healthy, then they would never make it. They so would make obviously sense. not, right? Yeah. So it's actually how well you're handling stress and your mind is the one number one thing that allows you to handle stressors. That's so good. So you don't have to eat broccoli. There's hope. There's you just hope. have to be perfectly spiritual. I just have to be really in tune with <laughs> <Yeah>. the Lord. <laughs> That's all you got to do. So uh, everyone heard that. Well, from let me, me let me say that too. Is is the other thing is so so the, everything we just said brings good th- stuff into your life and makes you f- emotionally strong. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're doing that, but then you're at it's it's kind of like if you eat broccoli, but then you go eat a cake. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you're in prayer, you're in worship and you feel amazingly, uh, you know, just strong that God is your rock. Right. Yeah. But then you go and you watch the news. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like you're tasting <laughs> from both pieces. Uh, it's kind of like your broccoli and your cake. Right. So true. <laughs> you know, so, true. so you also got to guard what you let in. You have to um, 
stop watching honestly stop watching the news yeah it's like are you really learning anything from it you're just really being told life sucks again and (laughs) don't go outside right call tell your neighbor to text you if you can't go out if you get quarantined (laughs) if if the news is something that you feel like is yeah it's negative everybody i actually came in this morning kind of feeling negative until i was just some people not here but when i came to the office because I i was watching all these youtube and facebook videos about what's going on yeah and it was just that give me all negative feeling and frustrated. Well, there's also, and we we don't even have time to go into it, but there's also just like there is a you know on the positive side with you know we know who we are in the Lord, and faith can spread. Uh, there's also fear fear spreads majorly, and there's also a spirit of fear that's driving this thing. And I can feel. Um, I remember hearing one time Bill Johnson say, uh, "I hope I word this right, but." It was in his book, Strengthen Yourself in the Lord, which is a phenomenal book. There was a scripture in, in the Word of God where it said that David stopped and he strengthened himself in the Lord. It was a moment where everything was, everyone was ready to mutiny on him. His men were ready to kill him. And it doesn't say exactly what he did. It just said David stopped and he strengthened himself in the Lord. And I feel like we're in a season where people need to uh, realize that there is a spirit of fear out there that is just... Um, it'll get on you it's it's and uh what he said was as i remember bill he said he said it only takes me about 10 minutes of focusing on something negative before i start going down this path of negativity and this dark cloud gets over me and it doesn't take a long time it can literally be five to ten minutes of just watching negative stuff on online or talking to someone on the phone that all of a sudden you felt fine before they called and it's not that we want to kick those people out of our lives it's just that we want to be constantly cleansing ourselves and if anything sharing faith and hope back to them and so i think it's really important to realize that i just keep bringing it back to fear because i feel like that's the that's actually i didn't put this online because I, I felt like it would have been taken as insensitivity to what some people are going through but i really feel like the fear is far more dangerous than the virus it's just it's so big right now and so uh, i think it's huge that we realize even for our health like you're saying it's just it's such an attack on our emotional stress and that's, life. And that's why it's so like i post this a couple times too is it's so important right now to be focused and not complacent yeah it's good because you, you it's like oh we're at home when you're at home on the weekend it's so hard just it's not just like i'm done <laughs> chilling whatever i watch the news i don't care it doesn't affect me whatever but it's being complacent by allowing those things when you're complacent when the, when the enemy comes in he's like all right cool you're gonna sit there and just so lay true. back i'm gonna i'm gonna sneak in and then that's when then the next thing you know you're depressed again you're yeah. scared yeah and then you got to do all this extra work to get back to unscared yeah. so just being focused is a big one too that's good that's so. good any other thoughts on the immune system? And if, uh, man, lots of thoughts. I think there's I got so many. We got one more to do. Yeah. So we got what is that? Three, four. <laughs> um, so yeah. So movement. Uh, oh yeah. So just just uh, you can do. So there's some things you want to do. The strength. I talked about strengthening your body, making it more resilient to stress. So the other things that have been um, shown to help your body get back to balance or homeostasis. So one was proprioceptive movement. The second is actually something called adaptogens. Okay. So there's actually herbs out there that are adaptogenic meaning like it helps your body adapt to stress. Wow. So it kind of balances your body out. And those are, uh, a lot of people have heard of these, but things like some of the most researched ones are ashwagandha, rhodiola, cordyceps, okay. um, your CBD oils. Yeah. And I know some of these things can be kind of expensive, yeah. but um, I mean, you can get like an ash- ashwagandha uh, liquid one that could last you, I mean, like three months. Wow. You know, so you get it. And so those are those things, but even like cacao, like you can get a bag of cacao powder, or get a cacao powder, cacao powder for like fifteen bucks. Wow! So you could use that. Um, actually, let's use that. So, so chocolate. Um, and I'm not talking about Hershey Kisses. <laughs> I'm not talking it's about. Getting, uh, getting excited. I'm actually not even talking about chocolate bars. Yeah, okay. But getting like cacao, actual cacao powder or cacao butter, you can rub that on. Like if you put that back through here, cacao makes you release oxytocin and um, serotonin. Wow. So I always tell guys, if you, if your wife's stressed out, she's going to leave you for a chocolate bar. <laughs> and that's what happens. Isn't it? That's so funny. That's <laughs> because so... it, it helps make them feel good. Wow. However, if, you're, if you do cacao butter, like you massage cacao butter, right? And they turn around, they see you, they think it's you, not the cacao butter. So you're good. <laughs> that's so fun. Yeah. That's so fun. Well, I think these things are huge for... Uh, you know, I think actually a lot of people are going to really enjoy this. And so um, I appreciate you doing this. Um, we're going to shoot uh, another video. will go live actually next week. And so uh, we're going to talk about uh, the topics of a healthy family, um, you know, and some of these are going to flow over into each other a little bit. But we want to talk about a healthy family and we might hit a little bit more on stress and then also just a couple 
Q and A's that we had sent in. And so um, I want to encourage you guys um, check these guys out. Um, they've been just a huge blessing to my my family from both uh, medically and just our friends. And so um, check them out. They're at Queen City Health Center in Charlotte, and um, Dr. Kyle Lovelace and Dr. Holly Lovelace. So um, thanks for watching this, and uh, we'll shoot another video and come back soon. Bye.